Well, joining us on the line at this time to give his thoughts on what took place yesterday. And I do want to let you know that on Wednesday night, we're going to have an extended discussion with key representatives of the business community as we look at the new face of business. Uh, but Gabriel Farah is also going to be as part of that panel. But this morning, to give an immediate reaction as to what was stated yesterday, he's joining us via Skype this morning. We're utilizing technology as we two here at CNC3 get accustomed to this new norm. Uh, Gabriel, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Eva. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm first going to get straight into the conversation. Yesterday, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Trade, as well as the Prime Minister, introduced a stimulus package, money for the jobless inbuilt pledges, 1,500 monthly salary support for the 88,000 COVID unemployed people, $1 billion bailout. Was it enough, or is it enough to protect the business sector from a freefall? Hey, Ma, I think I think the private sector, in the main recognizes the limitations the government has in its current environment with energy, um, with energy income. And what we are seeing is we are seeing so much collaboration between the government and the private sector, and we recognize that we have to work together. Is it enough? You know, something that's never going to be enough. But is there, is there a genuine interest to work together? Yes, there is. What we are seeing is we are seeing a whole different level of collaboration, the Ministry of Trade, the Ministry of Health, ensuring that food supplies are available, ensuring that farmer supplies are available. When you look at our supermarkets versus the rest of the world, you see a much more organized and, and measured response. And I think I want to commend the government for that. So that's the first thing I would like to say. Okay. And I, I think we can all agree because I, I made the point that this is not about beating the government. I think as though from a communications, a health perspective, the government is trying its best to give us a sense of assurance. But from a business perspective, are your members given enough wiggle room or breathing room to survive? We don't know how long this is going to last with us. So, so let's focus on that a little bit. Every business is seeing decline in activity. Every business, except maybe for supermarkets and pharmacies. But the larger businesses have the capital base and cash flows to manage that. I think what you're hearing most of us saying is smaller businesses don't have those cash resources. And that's why I think all of us are focused on what can we do for them. Um, the, the VAT refunds and tax refunds are excellent. Um, thank God they are coming. We have identified that we must focus today on stimulus, financial stimulus for those who are being compliant, those who have paid their taxes, those who have paid the NIS. And right now, the VAT refunds are going to help a portion of those people. The ones they're not going to help are the ones we need to focus on. What do we need to do for these people? I know that uh, both Franca Castello and Nirad Tiwari spoke about the business levy, the corporation taxes. Uh, several members of the business community have also messaged to say it really is nothing because you're owed the VAC refund anyway. So what was really done for business yesterday? So, well, I guess what was really done is at least we got the cash that, was, that we owed. That will give us some cash flows. Um, the, the, the deferral of loans and interest reductions were also helpful. What we would like to see and what our members have asked us for is on the 25th, that's tomorrow, there's a VAT payment due. On the, on the 31st of March, there's a green fund and business levy due. And on the 30th of um, April, there's a tax payment due. Can we defer that for smaller businesses? So you, do you make representation? Did you make that? Because I understand, and no one said it, but I think uh, Nirad Tiwari said that they gave a list. Uh, I'm assuming the TTMA gave a list, so I'm assuming also the chamber would have also given a list. Out of the list of things that uh, the business committee asked the government for, did they deliver, or how much did they deliver on what you asked for? Um, they, delivered, they delivered the unemployment relief. We would have liked to have also seen an employment support where if, if a company keeps people employed and those businesses that are closed, the same level of support could be given to companies who keep people employed. Again, I think because we've been looking at what's going on with the government, we recognize their limitations and we are looking forward to continued collaboration so we can support our, our, our businesses going forward. On the flip side, let me ask you this, Mr. Barry. You know, I, 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 I did an interview with Arthur Lovejack, who has been one of the big business personalities who survived 50 years. So he's seen the economy through ebbs and flows. 
um, he urged the business community to take advantage of the loans, of the reduced spreads now, uh, to invest more, to reinvest. I see that the Prime Minister and the government is offering the hoteliers in Tobago uh, incentives to keep afloat. Is it that the business community is not, you know, just not taking advantage of it because that's the it, that's those who survive and those who don't. So is it that that the the risk taking is just not there anymore? I think Trinidad businesses are one of the most resilient in the world, and and I think out of this we're going to become so much stronger. Right now, most of the smaller businesses are just trying to find their feet. The larger businesses have already identified opportunities, already identified export opportunities that they can that they can that they can harness because of this. So I am confident that working collaboratively with the government, with other business service organizations, with our members, we will now create a new normal and a new opportunity. The most important thing we have to do is don't panic. Focus on the opportunities. People like Arthur Lockjack, people, people like you know um, Norman Sabger, Jerry Warner, um, Christian Mute. We'll you're hearing them talking about opportunities, right? Um, I was talking to Ali Mohammed the other day, and he's looking at his at his manufacturing base and other, in other parts of the world. So there's significant opportunity that many of the larger businesses are looking at. I think this, the smaller businesses right now, they're just focused on staying alive. Yeah, you know, that would be my question, because I could look at the big businesses and they would see, they have the, the shark tank approach where they go out and they buy big and you buy when people, are, and that, that's just it, that is just a capitalist world. But for the people who have to pay the corporation tax, the business levy, who have to pay a payroll, who have 50 employees, and according to Franca Costello, the small and medium enterprises in her, um, under their membership, are already facing a fall of 50% in revenue. For the people who then have to pay taxes based on last year's revenue figure, which is already which is now 50% less than it was, what do we say to them? Well, you know, you talk about smaller business and two names came across my mind. One is a company called WePay, another one is called MyTerm Finance. Both of those organizations have driven their foreign growth in the region dramatically and they're actually looking at opportunities like this so there are certain types of businesses technology based businesses that are not are not locked in to the rock culture at Tobago, and they're looking outward some of the four smaller business the reality is that they need to rethink their business model and it's forcing all of us to look at new ways to do things and i'm confident we are going to get over this I am confident that some of the larger businesses are going to support those smaller businesses. I was talking to John Hadda the other day, and he has invested in a number of small businesses and helped them to grow. And I'm confident out of this, we're going to see better. The reality is that biz businesses want consumers, and we're going to do what's necessary to ensure we keep people employed and we keep a consumer that can, that can afford to consume. Let me ask you this, uh, Gabriel, because I know we're against time, and I do want to tell our viewers that on Wednesday night you will be again joining us on that panel. Uh, when I spoke with Nirat Tiwari, he spoke about diagnosing the problem. If I come back to really and truly what was offered to business, and I understand we have to protect the most vulnerable, and I give kudos to the government for the grants, for asking the banks to step up, because God knows the banks have profited, and we do need to, re we do need to, to basically shrink on that, that spread. But um, in terms of the the businesses that the diagnosis of the problem was it enough to make them or give them the breathing room if they don't get the allowances or deferrals for the taxes can they really survive for the next three months i'm certain many will survive some of them that are not properly capitalized or don't have the cash resources unfortunately will have to restructure what what we are going to get is an is a next wave we're going to see new businesses coming out of this um, and I think that we have the capacity to survive. I, I believe that we're going to end up with a whole new way of doing business. And as I said, when I look at people like WePay and My Term Finance that are going and they're, they're now in Costa Rica and all of these places, you're saying, how can a small business do this? And technology definitely is the enabler. Some of the traditional businesses are going to have to rethink themselves. Some of them are actually looking at exports um, very aggressively. And I think that's going, to, that's going to drive export growth for us because the trend that market is going to be soft. So I believe all in all, out of this, we will come out stronger and we just have to work together.
I, you know, your optimism is always, and I hope that it's infectious, and I hope that people do get that sense of hope, because it is a time where we do need all hands on deck, and we do need to be going in the same direction. Um, from the political directory, do you get uh, do you get the do you get the idea that everyone is on board? Business, labor, the government, small opposition, that everyone understands the magnitude of the storm that we are facing. My final question to you as we wrap. No one can win. Labor can't win. Government can't win. The opposition can't win. Business can't win. We either all win or we all die. So we have to work together. And I'm seeing, I've had discussions with um, Labour at our NTAC meetings, and I'm seeing a much more proactive uh, perspective. Government, same thing. Um, even the opposition, to a certain extent, I'm seeing some improvement, and I hope we move away from this partisan perspective of trying to score political points and focus on, on keeping our people safe and getting us through this. Here, I want to thank you very much, and we look forward to you joining us again on Wednesday night. And I keep telling you, on Wednesday night, we're going to have a discussion about the new business normal and continuity, and what will the business community look like in Trinidad and Tobago.